Hey, I'm Jake from Mido. I'm going to show you our spreadsheet that generates Python. So here we go. Apply our merge. Here's our merge data set. Now I'm going to apply a filter to the zip codes. Add filter greater than 90,000. We see the live updating, and I'm going to create a pivot table. I have my states here. I want to see how many zip codes I have for each state. And there's our pivot table. And here is the generated code made in seconds. Before we talk really about what Mito is and the different functionality it has, I just want to show you how you can get access to it in case you want to start using it yourself or want to follow along in the video. Mito is a free tool. You can download it from docs.trymito.io. Go to the getting started folder here and then click installing Mito. Just make sure you have Python 3.6 or above and then in your terminal, run pip install mito installer which downloads the mito installer and then python-m mito installer install which is running the install command within the installer and then we're just going to open JupyterLab within your command prompt. To do this all we have to do is call import mito sheet which imports the package and then mito sheet.sheet -sheet, which will call the front end. So I'll run this cell which is shift plus enter. To import, I can do it one of two ways. If I have a data frame that I'm working with above already, I can pass that data frame in as an argument, df here. So the nice thing is you can call Mito into any point in your analysis and call the current data frame into the Mito sheet. But if you have local files you wanna use, that's super simple as well. I'll just click the import button. Now I can select from my local files. I'm gonna add airport pets CSV, and I'm also going to add zip code data CSV. Notice these are both CSV files that get automatically turned into data frames that we can work with in the MITRE sheet. And because we imported two, they appear as different tabs in the MITRE sheet. And below, we generate the code that is turning these CSV files into data frames. One of the first things people want to do most commonly with MITRE once they get their data in is look at some summary statistics for any of the columns. This gives us a great understanding of the data and can help us decide what next steps we want to take in terms of our analysis. To look at summary statistics, all we have to do is click this button here, go to the summary stats tab. The first thing we'll see is a frequency chart for the data that we're looking at. This is zip codes. And then we'll get our summary statistics below. Filtering is a very common feature in Mito and allows us to work with smaller data sets and investigate the data in a really smart, intuitive way. To apply a filter, all we're gonna do is click on this icon here, and now we can click Add Filter. We can use Contains, Does Not Contains, lots of different conditional statements here, and apply the condition that we want. So the states here, we want to look at just, let's look at just Maryland, for example. MD, we see all the data sets with Maryland here or we can make it just M and get a variety of states that contain M in it. And then below, we'll generate the equivalent code for that filter here. Merging data sets together is a really nice way to consolidate our data and work with it all as one unit. Here we have two data sets, zip code data and airport pets. Both of them have the zip code column, so that's the column I'm gonna to wanna to join on here. I'll click our merge button. The first thing you'll notice is that it creates a new data frame, which is where the merge is taking place. I can configure the merge by deciding what my merge key is gonna be. This is the column from each uh, data set that I'm gonna join on. Again, we're gonna, it automatically detects that zip code is the shared column, so we'll keep that as the default. We can select what sheets we're gonna merge from. We only have two, so we'll keep those. And then in column to keep, we can decide what columns to keep in the merge. For now, we'll keep all of them. And so I'll close this and we have our new data set. And I can rename this by clicking rename here. And I'll call this merged. And then below, we'll generate the code for that merge as well as the renaming of the merge data frame. Pivoting is a really great way to group our data and understand patterns in the data itself. So we have states here and we have zip codes that relay to each state. Each zip code obviously falls into a different state. I wanna know how many zip codes I have for each step state. So I'm gonna use our pivot table functionality. Again, this creates a new data frame and now we can decide what data frame we want to choose from. We're gonna click, uh, pick the merge data frame to get our data. As the rows, we're gonna put state so we want to look at each state. And as our value, we're going to put 
zip code, and we're going to use the count aggregation method here. We can use multiple ones, so we could use sum, we could use mean, medium, but we're going to use count here. And now we get a count for each state of how many zip codes are present. And below, we get the code for that pivot table here. Here, I've applied a filter to our pivot table, and now I can graph it. This is super simple in Mito using a package called Plotly. I'll click graph here. We can use the chart type we want. I'm gonna go with bar here as my X axis. I'll put the state, and as my Y axis, I'll put the zip codes, the count of zip codes. And we'll see, here's our chart. To zoom in on the data, I can do this just to look at a specific window. Here we go, we get a better picture of these values. I can also zoom back out to the normal view. If we want to download this uh, graph as an image, we can do so to maybe share with colleagues or put in a presentation somewhere. We also have different chart types we can use though, as I said before. So if we want to look at a box plot, for example, of one column, let's look at just the zip code values here. We get a box plot showing us those important values along the way. So here's all the code we've generated from this analysis that we've been doing in the MITO sheet up here. What's really great about MITO is that the code can be carried forward in the rest of your analysis. So really, MITO fits seamlessly into your Jupyter Notebook, into analysis you may already be doing. You can go back and forth between MITO and code as much as you like. To use the code and effectuate the code that we've created here, all I have to do is run the cell, shift plus enter. Remember, DF4 is our pivot table. And if I run DF4 here, we'll see our pivot table. So this is all real edits we're doing to a data frame inside MITO.